name's Jennifer LaFleur. I am the data editor at the Investigative Reporting Workshop in Washington, D.C., and I also teach data journalism at American University. So it's almost a term that shouldn't really exist anymore. Um, I used to have a title long ago at a news organization of computer assisted reporting editor, which like we don't say telephone assisted reporting and we don't say you know, pencil assisted reporting. So um, basically I work on stories that involve data analysis, but I also work on all of our investigations. So, um, but my, my specialty obviously and my skills are in data analysis. We vet all data sets. Every data set you get from a government agency is usually a mess. There's inconsistencies, there's missing data, there's things that are way too high or way too low to be valid in the data set. So there's a whole process anybody who looks at a data set needs to go through to make sure it's right. I, so I'm a member and now I'm actually on the board of directors for investigative reporters and editors. And IRE has, in teaching the workshops it's taught for many years, has standards that it strongly suggests people use. Um, it's really up to news organizations. There are news organizations that don't vet data at all. They just put it up and, you know, there are some, news orga some organizations that believe that they shouldn't change anything in the data, um, which is a whole different philosophy. Um, but everywhere I've worked has had a set of standards that we had to go through. And in fact, um, at Reveal, when I had the team that did data journalism, we had a, a standard of every, one person rechecking someone else's work so that everything got vetted twice. I mean, there are cases where if no data exists, you have to build your own data. And I've done way too many stories <laughs> that involve that, or it, at some point it's just so hard to get it that you end up using another method to get it. Um, but the state, same standards apply when you're, you know, especially if you're doing data entry, two people need to check that data, not just one person. No one is perfect at entering data the first time. So there are a lot of things you need to check even if you're creating the data yourself. But the benefit of creating your own data is you have data that no one else has, so you can do stories that no one else has. Um, I think, I mean, some of the examples I showed yesterday, I am not a graphic designer, so I'm not an expert in that by any means, but I've run across charts where, you know, the scale that, that one puts on a line graph can make it look like a very dramatic increase when it's really on a different scale would look flat. So there are just ways that, and, and I don't even know if it's manipulation, it's just like bad design practice to show data in ways that really isn't the most accurate portrayal of that data. One of the um, graphs I showed, which I know other design teachers have used in the past, is um, there was a chart about shootings in Florida, but they scaled it opposite. So the zero was at the top and 850 or something was at the bottom. So it looked like when the Florida stand your ground law went in that the shootings dropped, but because the graph was flipped upside down, it actually went way up. <laughs> I think maybe someone was trying to be clever and cool and didn't realize that it would be interpreted weirdly. You know, I used to run things by my mom to say, what do you think this says? <laughs> um, also, the other thing is, is map, when we map things, especially if we map points, um, we want to make sure we have everything. So if I'm doing a map of all the homicides in my city and I have like, you know, 20 that I can't like plot out where they are. If I do a map without those and those 20 actually have to be, happen to be concentrated in an area, I'm providing a wrong map. Um, it's not actually the true picture of what happened with homicide in my city. Um, so the steps that we have in our vetting steps, um, which is the same steps we use when I worked at ProPublica, look for duplicates, look for missing data, look for, um, make sure everything is included. So if you have what you think is a statewide database, is every county in the database. Um, 
look for things that are really out of range. So one of the databases I showed yesterday was uh, U.S. Department of Education data about AP courses offered at schools. According to the College Board, there's about 40 classes that can be offered, but the data we received from the Department of Education had some schools with like 1,200 AP courses. So there were some, some things that were really, really out of range. And so both in my classes and in any data project we do, there's a series of steps we go through to just make sure the data meets all those basic criteria. So I think the baseline for any reporter who wants to incorporate data into their job is to be, have a good handle of spreadsheets and then maybe databases beyond that. Um, things like statistics and you know, Python programming for web scraping and you know, R, those are kind of the next steps beyond that. And what, what happens is, you know, I have students who are like, what skills do I need to have in my basket to be able to do this? Um, for me, it's more like I got to a point in my reporting where I couldn't do something. And so I needed to figure out the next tool that would help me do that story. And I think by doing it that way, you actually are applying the skills and you're going to remember them more because you're, you're using them for something you really need. So, yeah. So a data editor is just a weird title. I would say more data journalist, um, which is kind of what the new term is for it. Um, I, I think, I mean, newsrooms are pretty strapped. So I think newsrooms who are hiring right now, I just looked at a whole bunch of job ads, even like beat reporter jobs, investigative jobs, they're calling for people who have data skills. I'm not sure when they put the ads together, they know exactly what they want. Um, but I think newsrooms realize if they are going to do um, investigations in particular, they have to have people who can um, analyze data. And then as far as user engagement goes, they've got to have people, which is sort of a separate skill, who can you know, build interactives and build searchable databases. So. So I think there are a lot of organizations out there, like investigative reporters and editors, and um, you know other journalism associations that are really trying to do more data training um, for reporters. So I would just try to engage with some of those groups and, and get some baseline skills. And also, the community of people who are doing this kind of work are very um, collaborative. I've many, many times vetted stories for other news organizations because they didn't have someone there to help them. So I think there's a lot of sharing in the community and I encourage people to turn to, you know, someone where they saw a story they really liked, reach out to that person, see how they did it, and they probably will give you advice on how to do your story. <laughs>